Today I'm going to be talking about a real hero of the Battle of Britain. But not a Spitfire, this one. The Hurricane. Designed by Sidney Cam and his design team at Hawker, Sidney Cam no less a genius than Mitchell was at Supermarine for the Spitfire. Indeed, the aeroplanes that Sidney Cam had designed bore a fair bit of percentage of the Royal Air Force between the wars. Aeroplanes like the Hind, the Fury, the Audax, the Tomtit, the Demon, all Sidney Cam's design. Obviously, biplanes between the wars had had their day. Aeroplanes going through the air very fast were monoplane aeroplanes now. And the Hurricane indeed was the first production aeroplane of the Royal Air Force to go through the air at over 300 miles an hour. A lot of questions that I get asked here is what's the difference between a Spitfire and a Hurricane? An impolite answer would be how long have you got? Very different designs from different design teams. The Hurricane out a year before the Spitfire answering to a design specification of a fighter that could carry the machine guns that it could. Now, a Hurricane was designed in a traditional way. If you look at the sides, they're all Irish linen. A Spitfire, all monocot steel stress skin. If you take a picture of a Fury or a Hart or a Demon and you look at the tail of those aeroplanes and you look at the tail of our Hurricane here and the fuselage. You can see the lineage of Sydney Cam's designs going through them. The Hurricane, of course, was a mixture of ancient and modern almost. It had the steel tubular construction and then on top of that was placed the wooden framework, which was fairly lightweight. And then the fabric people would come with their uh, great lengths of stuff and simply chuck it over the top and they're, they're dressmakers really. It would all be done by hand. The fabric would be pulled down into place and uh, it was all stitched together. Now I say unsung hero of the Battle of Britain, a hurricane most certainly was. Well over half of every enemy aeroplane destroyed in the Battle of Britain was by hurricanes, not Spitfires. Spitfires in the Battle of Britain were down to 19 squadrons. Hurricanes, there were 32 squadrons of them. A Hurricane was a real workhorse, a reliable aeroplane. Advantages, it could take more damage than a Spitfire. The side, Irish linen, some explosive cannon shells from a Messerschmitt 109. Sometimes if it hit the fuselage, it would go in one side, out the other without even exploding. Coming back to base, Another patch of Irish linen, as long as the bullet hasn't damaged any of the control surfaces or the wires inside, just paste and dope another piece on one side and another piece where it came out the other and away the pilot went again. Both the Hurricane and the Spitfire, powered by the same very magnificent 27 litre V12 Rolls-Royce engine. But the Spitfire and the Hurricane both had, because of that engine, an Achilles heel. It couldn't do a negative G dive. So in the situation, if a Spitfire or Hurricane was chasing a Messerschmitt 109, the Messerschmitt 109 with its fuel injected Daimler Benz engine could push its nose into a negative G dive. The archeries in the Luftwaffe pilot's eyes might pop, but the Spitfire and the Hurricane could not do that. If a Hurricane or a Spitfire followed the 109 into a negative G dive, the carburetors would flood and the engines would cough and splutter, which is not a good situation in the middle of a dogfight. So, the 109 pushes its nose over, the Hurricane or the Spitfire have to peel over the top, like spinning around a bucket of water, to keep the flow in the carburetor into a positive G. The problem with the carburetor wasn't cured, but it was certainly helped by an extremely clever lady called Mrs. Beatrice Schilling who came up with a design, a toss up between a washer and an olive, to put inside the carburetor to help and squeeze the flow of fuel. So it didn't eliminate the problem, but it gave the carburetor engines a lot better chance if you were touching a negative G maneuver to catch the 109. Now, eventually, a Spitfire would catch a 109 in a dive. A Hurricane probably wouldn't, but a Hurricane could outturn the 109. 
Because with the same engine, a Hurricane being 20-30% bigger, a Hurricane's rate of climb was not as fast as a Spitfire's and in general was not as manoeuvrable. So the tactic then was adopted for the Hurricanes to take on the bombers, more numerous, and the Spitfires to take on the escorting fighters. This particular Hurricane actually fought in the Battle of Britain. Unfortunately, did come off second best to a couple of Messerschmitt 109s over Deal in Kent. The pilot, a Flight Lieutenant Rogers, no relation, did survive. The Hurricane evolved quite a bit slower than the Spitfire. Spitfires, of course, in many marks, basically doubled in size and performance between the beginning and the end of the war. The Hurricane, not quite so much. The basic design was all the same. There were different marks, different Merlin engines fitted from 990 horsepower to one of the PR versions in photo reconnaissance, had a two-speed, two-stage supercharger, same as a Mark 9 Spitfire, and went into photo reconnaissance duties. That Hurricane, for a Hurricane, was particularly fast, about 350 miles an hour. But the performance of a Hurricane, regardless of mark and what it was carrying, always was a fair bit shorter than a Spitfire or a 109 in out and out speed. So we're around the front of the Hurricane now and I can show you the huge slab sided very strong wings. Better than the Spitfire as far as that's concerned. Grouped together eight 303 machine guns, four in each wing, one either side. So a very very stable gun platform. One other advantage that a Hurricane had over a Spitfire, the hardest thing about flying a Spitfire is putting it down at the end of a very tiresome day fighting for your life. The wheels start at the outside, come down in the middle, you've got a very narrow landing track. As you can see from the Hurricane, the wheels start on the inside and come down so you have a very wide landing track to land on. As one pilot said, you could be quite ham-fisted when you were putting a Hurricane back down again. Hurricanes were used in every front in the Second World War and in just about every area, from the heat of Malta to the freezing wastelands of Russia. There were about 14,500 Hurricanes built and the last one rolled off the production line in about 1944. Without Hurricanes in the Second World War, who would have known? Serving not only in the Battle of Britain, but as ground attack, as a fighter bomber, fired off merchant ships, off catapults, regularly to do a one-way mission. A Hurricane, with the pilot in, would be blasted off on a catapult to try and defend the merchant convoys, hopefully within reach of land. If he wasn't, he would basically have to try and ditch close to the ship as he could, and they would try and pick the pilot out of the freezing water. And here is what has become of the famous Hurricane, the even more famous Hurry Bomber. The bombs are carried underneath the wings and they're meant to be dropped with pinpoint accuracy. Another problem with a Hurricane was quite a fundamental one. The cockpit up here, as you can see, is just behind a saddle tank. A big tank of 100 octane fuel. If a Hurricane was hit by an incendiary round in the fuel tank, the fuel tank, of course, would blow up. Now, the pilot has two options. He can either stay in the fighter and burn to death, or he can peel back the cockpit, climb out, but of course, then he's got a 300 mile an hour blast furnace straight into his face. A lot of Hurricane pilots were extremely badly burned. One pilot who was badly burned was a young officer, 23 year old officer in the Battle of Britain called Nicholson. Nicholson had been hit by four cannon shells in his fuel tank. He peeled back the cockpit, climbed out very angrily, but as he climbed out, another Messerschmitt passed straight in front of his Hurricane. He jumped back into the cockpit full of flames, hit the gun button and opened the throttle and shot the enemy aeroplane down. Nicholson did survive, but was very, very badly burned. But he woke up the following day and was informed he'd been awarded the Victoria Cross for his actions the only one in the Battle of Britain and in RAF Fighter Command in the wartime, as far as I know. Pilots used to say you climb in a Hurricane, in a Spitfire, you put it on. Climbing up and over and down into the cockpit 
is quite a task to climb up, over and down. So let's go and have a closer look in the cockpit of a Hurricane. The big innovation was the blind flying panel. In the old biplanes, you would have an altimeter and an airspeed indicator and a rev counter. They'd just be randomly dotted around the cockpit. With the Hurricane and everything else that followed, including most of the bombers, I think they, we all had much the same blind flying panel, which was six instruments, six of them. And that was standard for uh, all aircraft from that, from that point onwards, which is a jolly good thing, because at least one could hop from one type to another without too much difficulty. So we're now uh, in the cockpit. I have the privilege to be in the cockpit of this magnificent Battle of Britain veteran Hurricane. A little bit more room than a Spitfire. Again, like I say, I'm sat in the scaffolding as it comes round me. I certainly wouldn't like to imagine trying to get out of it with uh, 300 mile an hour flames in my face as I try and escape if I have been shot down like Nicholson was. Majority or a lot of pilots would have taken off with the cockpit open like this, but of course wouldn't be around flying and fighting with it open. But with the cockpit shut, um, it would be quite an enclosed environment with lots of fuel and fumes around. The hand control, the spade grip and the basic six, same as a Spitfire, but a fair bit more room. We've got the airspeed indicator, horizon, climb and bank, altitude, compass down here. Yes, yeah, quite an enclosed, quite nerve-wracking environment when you're fighting for your life. Sydney Cam carried on after the war at Hawkers and went on to design some fantastic aeroplanes for the RAF, including the very famous and beautiful Hawker Hunter. Cam was knighted in 1953 for his fantastic design work and some of the revolutionary aeroplanes he was involved with went on to be the Harrier jump jet. Cam passed away in 1963, but a lot of people remember him for the work that he did in saving us in the dark days of the Battle of Britain with this magnificent Hawker Hurricane. Out of the 14,500 Hurricanes produced, the last one rolling off the production line in 1944, there are very few left. Even rarer are airworthy ones, with currently, as I speak, about 12 or 13 airworthy Hurricanes worldwide. This one, of course, and about three others that live here at Duxford. <laughs>